Attention viewer, you are watching the world's biggest Monster Truck Diecast YouTube channel. This is Monster Jam OCD. Hello Monster Jam fans and welcome back to another Monster Jam OCD review video. Today we are taking a look at the last new set of singles packs by Spin Master Monster Jam for 2023 and this is series 33. Now before I get into this video and the whole assortment breakdown, I just want to quickly say that my first set of samples actually is missing one of the key trucks of the assortment which was one I was looking most forward to which is Avenger. But for you guys, magically in the second half of this video, Avenger is going to appear and I'm going to review it. But for the assortment breakdown part of it, it won't be featured because I'm still waiting for them to ship me that single sample. So I uh, just wanted to quickly disclaimer that it is still in here. It's not canceled. It's in this assortment. You're going to see it in the later half of the video. But for now, let's do the assortment breakdown with the eight trucks that I do have, starting with, of course, the Chase Piece, the final new Monster Feast food truck, which is the Grease Trap. Now, I have a big debate going on with myself whether I love this more than the Wasabi Warrior. As you guys know, I mentioned Wasabi Warrior is my favorite so far of the food trucks. And this being the sixth and final one, I got to say, I can't wait to open it up because I will get the full perspective of it. But this might take the win here for my favorite of the year, just because I love the 50s diner theme that is going with. It is, of course, American themed food. Uh, but we'll take a good look at this as the last truck of the assortment uh, review later on. But Grease Trap is our first truck of the assortment breakdown, our final new food truck for Monster Feast for the Chase Piece series. We have the amazing Tom Fullery Recreation. Everyone's been looking forward to this one this year, and it is perfect. It is absolutely 100% perfect. I can't wait to open this one up as well. So Tom Fullery Motorsports slash Star Creations Recreation, the brand new RV camper style truck. We have Bad Habit. Now, this one we're going to talk a lot about because it is not anywhere close to what I thought it was going to be, nor what other people thought it was going to be. But uh, Bad Habit here on the Monster Jam Stunt Pickup Truck style casting. Uh, a lot to mention. Again, we'll talk more in detail about it when we unbox it later on. But there it is, the Bad Habit making an appearance in Series 33. Captain's Curse returns as part of the Retro Rebels, this time with retro tires on the Whiplash slash W style casting. Uh, it is still the black body. Everyone was thinking it was going to be the red one this year, but it is still the black body. However, we'll talk about this as well when we get to it in the assortment. Sparkle Smash makes another appearance this year in the Crazy Creatures line. Uh, just another popular truck that they continue to push out. And here it is yet again uh, with some of the classic colors that it originally released with. So I think a lot of people will enjoy this one. Good color combos on that. The final phased out truck of 2023. And I'm hoping the last one of all time. I really didn't enjoy this series as much as I thought I was going to uh, after seeing the last five or so trucks. I think um, phased out was cool. I do think, pun intended, that it needs to be phased out itself. Uh, but zombie ends it pretty strong. There's some pretty cool features to this zombie uh, that we'll talk about in a moment. Bakugan Dragonoid, part of the Legacy Trucks. Uh, yet again, just a standard Bakugan release, but uh, we'll probably start this review with this one in just a second. And then the last new truck besides Avenger World Finals 21 is Grave Digger from the Steel Reveal series. Uh, it is not the chrome body, unlike the other ones that did get the special bodies. Uh, this one is just a standard uh, body with printed decals. So I'll talk about this in a second as well. Same with everything else that we talked about that we haven't gone into detail about. I do want to quickly show you guys the render of Avenger upside down. Sorry for that. It's just hard to get on camera. Uh, there is the Avenger that's currently missing from the assortment breakdown, which is the 25th anniversary uh, designed by Jam Customs, Taylor Andes, who also designed OCD Meltdown. Uh, so we'll be talking about this later in the review. It will be in this, but for now, you won't see it in the beginning part as we jump into the review. So we're going to start today with the Bakugan Dragonoid, like I talked about. Uh, this is from the Legacy Trucks, which includes the BKT printed tires, usually. Uh, so there's the Legacy Trucks there. And let's unbox and talk about it. So Bakugan Dragonoid is a very frequently released truck. Obviously, it's Spin Master's flagship truck for Monster Jam. Uh, this is the red and orange body. We did see the specialized body that we see every year, uh, a new one every year. Uh, we had the blue and yellow Bakugan Dragonoid earlier this year, which was a special scheme. This is a regular release of the scheme again. Uh, very clear graphics, as we've been seeing with Bakugan. It has improved wildly since the first release. It has a black roll cage with gray chassis, bright neon green rims, black tires with the BKT printing. And uh, that's pretty much it for this. And moving right along to the Sparkle Smash from the Crazy Creatures. Let's open this one up. 
And like I mentioned, Sparkle Smash has just become such a popular truck with a lot of different groups of people, uh, whether they're adults, their kids. Sparkle Smash definitely is uh, a universal truck that a lot of people have come to love and enjoy. But Sparkle Smash continues to be released on a pretty consistent basis this year especially, but over the last couple years in the diecast line. And this time it is with a purple roll cage and purple chassis, the same exact colors matching, and blue tires with blue rims, again, exactly matching the colors and it matches the scheme very well. Uh, the graphics clarity has become very, very well done on Sparkle Smash over the last few years. It still has its classic clear coat, which does reflect under sunlight and under direct light, like a flashlight. Uh, we also have the main in multicolor, as always, with the purple ears. And Sparkle Smash is becoming a household name in Monster Jam. All right, next up is Captain's Curse from the Retro Rebels. And like I mentioned earlier, it is not the red design that it debuted with back at the World Finals when it actually won its championship. It's one of, I believe, four trucks that won their championship in their debut year. Thunder Roars being the most recent one at World Finals 22, which was absolutely shocking. Um, but Captain's Curse actually did debut under the red body design uh, and won its championship that year. I believe it was 2007. For now, we have another issue of the black Captain's Curse, this time with a red roll cage and black chassis, which is accurate to the real-life truck. The real-life truck did run a black roll cage for, I believe, one show. It's still being debated whether it did or not, but I think it did. I, I remember a photo of it, uh, and Hot Wheels did produce one at some point, but uh, the red roll cage is absolutely accurate to how the real-life truck was. It also has the retro tires with red rims, which is awesome because we've needed red rims for customs, uh, for the customizer community for a long time. So this will definitely help them out with the retro red rims uh, for Bulldozer and other things. So that's really cool. And then we have Captain's Curse, the design, uh, very clear graphics on this release. It is on the Whiplash style casting. So it does have the Fender Flare and the slightly larger Willy style casting. Uh, I'm still hoping they'll produce the thinner one from the past, which is actually the, the one that this ran on. Um, but for now, it still shares the Whiplash casting. But the graphics are extremely clear. And Captain's Curse is one of my favorite trucks of all time that is unfortunately retired as of now. However, I would not be upset if they brought it back on the W casting or the Whiplash casting in real life or a body style. I think it would actually fit very well. And I think Captain's Curse uh, should definitely make a, a reappearance at some point in the future. But for now, we do continue to get die casts of it. And I'm still pushing them to do the red one. But hopefully in the future, we'll see the new casting with the red and the black remade onto it. And also hopefully Blacksmith at some point. But for now, Captain's Curse returns in Retro Rebels with Retro Tires in Series 33. And next up is the Steel Reveal, the final one of this year, Grave Digger. So let's unbox it. And I'm not sure why Steel Reveal has gone back and forth this year. We did see them produce uh, pure Zamac bodies with uh, transparent decals like the Son of a Digger here. Uh, you can see the graphics are much different on Son of a Digger because the clear coat actually covers the bare metal. Uh, this is bare metal, but it's not as polished. It's kind of different. You can see the difference in the glossiness. Um, same with the Alien Invasion that was released in Series 31. Um, but Gravedigger continues on with the standard body like Soldier Fortune and Double Decker had, where it's not a Zamac body, it's just a printed on decal set. Uh, but it does have that same classic style of the Steel Reveal, where the scratches in the metal are visible as decals. There's the Gravedigger body, it's the same graphics as usual on this Gravedigger. Uh, it has a silver roll cage, a bright neon green chassis, neon green rims, and black tires. So Steel Reveal Gravedigger, nothing too exciting about it, especially compared to the fact that we had a plastic body pure chrome edition so far. Uh, that is by far the best one of them all. Um, but this is another version of that in a way uh, from Steel Reveal. So another series that I think can phase out alongside phased out next year. I don't think this one should come back, but uh, it was a cool attempt at a new series nonetheless and a new idea on the plate. So there it is, Grave Digger from Series 33, Steel Reveal. And next up is Phased Out. Like I mentioned, the last one of this year for the Phased Out series, Zombie. Let's unbox it. Now I've had my debates about the phased out series, especially when you compare it to Earthshaker, which was by far the best one. I think the graphics on that one, it really started the series strong and then slowly over time, it became more of just a weird looking graphic series that wasn't as in tune with what they started with at the end. So Zombie has a little bit of both worlds. It has a lot of glitchy looking graphics, which you can see here. Uh, the zombie logo is not perfectly clear, which is very nice. Uh, the hair and all of the clothing, you can see the colorful misprints here. Uh, the brain is actually very misprinted. I like that a lot. Um, and the face as well, the eyes, you can see it in the teeth as well. Um, so not too bad. It's it's okay. I'm going to say it's probably one of the better ones just because the other ones are kind of a letdown, especially the Megalodon. But 
Uh, Zombie's got some pretty cool attributes to it. Um, this side, the same stuff going on. Zombie logo's a little more glitchy on this side as well. Uh, but the part that I like about it is that they mismatched the arms. One of the arms is yellow and one of the arms is gray. And I really, really enjoy that detail about it. I'll give Zombie second place for this year's phased out series. Uh, Earthshaker being the first place, even though it was the first one out. Um, I like the double colored arms. We also have a dark gray roll cage with a maroon chassis, a yellow rear tire, black front tire, gray rim in the front on the right side. And on the left side, we have a maroon tire over a maroon rim and a black tire over a silver rim on the back left. So there is Zombie from the phased out. Again, my favorite part being the mismatched arms. I just think that's the coolest part of the details. But uh, overall, phased out is one of my least favorite series of all time. And next up is the interesting outlier of this mix, a bad habit by Spin Master Monster Jam. Let's open it up. Okay, so Joe Sylvester's Bad Habit. It has been around for a long, long time. It has had many different paint schemes over its lifetime. Hot Wheels did a lot of them during their contract with Monster Jam. And we have not seen until now Spin Master do a Bad Habit. It was rumored by Joe Sylvester and Spin Master that it was going to come out last year on the square body tooling when it was Bad Habit Relapse. However, that was scrapped for whatever unknown reason and then Bad Habit switched to a Jeep style body in real life, but Spin Master did not produce a Jeep style cast. Instead, they opted to produce it on the Monster Jam stunt pickup truck. And I don't know what decisions were made to do that. I don't know who agreed to it or who did it. Joe Sylvester might've just said fully, hey, let's do it on this body. But whatever the reason is that it was produced this way, it definitely changed everyone's perspective on what we originally thought it was going to be, which was the Jeep body. I also think it would have made more sense to release the Bad Habit Relapse on the square body tooling that Storm Damage uses, just because it's easier. But anyway, in the end, we still received a Bad Habit, which is awesome because Bad Habit doesn't run with Monster Jam anymore. It's always awesome to get those indies that don't run with us anymore. But Bad Habit is much different than we thought it was gonna be. But let's hop into the review of it. I'll tell you this, I think it actually looks really awesome on the stunt truck style pickup truck. Uh, if Bad Habit were to do this body in real life, I wouldn't complain. Uh, but for now, it has the one-off die-cast edition. It is definitely odd. However, very awesome nonetheless, in my opinion. Uh, so here's the side panel. You can see the Bad Habit logo in gold, purple, and black. We have the flames coming out of the vent here in orange and purple. Uh, we have the RK logo. I forget what that stands for. Uh, it's a sponsor there on the side. The fenders are actually painted in matte black, which is very impressive considering the entire body is glossy. Also the vent here is in matte black. So very cool details. They must've really worked with Joe closely on this to do these details. So there's the matte black fenders and matte black air vents. Uh, we have the tailgate here, which is a sponsor that I'm not familiar with. Uh, if you guys know what that sponsor is, put it in the comments below. Uh, I don't even wanna try to pronounce it, but it looks like it's a sponsor related to Joe Sylvester and Bad Habit, so there's that. Uh, and then this side, same stuff going on, the Monster Jam logo in the front on both sides, I forgot to mention. And then the front here actually has the headlights painted in orange. The triangular headlights are in orange with the front bumper with a orange detail on there. The windshield, you can see right into the truck and the driver. And then we have an orange light bar on the top. And then uh, the back here, of course, the functioning tailgate um, as the stunt truck uh, from the 4th of July had. Uh, is still there. It also has a clear windshield piece in the back for the rear windshield and an orange trunk cover. So that does function to open and close as the stunt truck pickup truck had for the 4th of July. We also have an orange roll cage and black chassis, black rims with black tires and purple beadlocks, which is really cool because now this can officially be swapped with Mohawk Warrior for an accurate tour accurate Mohawk Warrior. Uh, so there's that. Also the hood here with flames and the Lincoln Welders sponsorship. Nothing on the roof, it's just blank. And really interesting mashup release here. I'm not complaining about it, honestly, after opening it up and looking at it, I think it's awesome. Uh, if Joe Sylvester approved it, I say, hey, you know what? We got something out of it. Bad Habit made it an appearance in Spin Master, even though it hasn't run with Monster Jam for so many years. Um, I'd still love to see a Bad Habit relapse on the square body, but for now, Bad Habit in this new mashup form on the stunt pickup truck, I'll take it for what it is. And as promised, Avenger finally showed up and it's magically making its way into the Series 33 review. Here it is in all its glory, the Avenger 25th anniversary paint scheme designed by Jam Customs Official, who also designed the OCD Meltdown exclusive, my own truck. So Taylor and I have worked a lot together. I'm so proud of him having not only one, but two die cast designs released by Spin Master and Monster Jam. This is definitely a big accomplishment for him and I'm very proud of him, but let's check it out. The Avenger World Finals 21, 25th anniversary paint scheme right now. 
So awesome. here it is, the 25th anniversary Avenger in all of its glory. This is really, really awesome. The Metal Flake Silver definitely helps these decals stand off the truck. It has neon green flames going along the side, a tiny skull, uh, which is accurate to the real life truck. The skull is a long story, but uh, the skull was actually sized down on accident and uh, never corrected the rendering of the truck that was designed by Taylor uh, had the skull in full detail. It's actually a really detailed skull. I'll put it on screen. Um, but the real life truck did have the tiny skull, so they did keep that detail. For the die cast release, which I respect because it is accurate to the real life truck, uh, we have the Avenger logo here for the 25th anniversary. It does have multiple Avengers in the logo. Again, I'll put it on screen because the die cast release in 164 scale uh, tends to lose detail and you can't see those details in this, but I guarantee you they're there. I can kind of see them, but not in great detail. Uh, below that, it says 25th anniversary, the Monstrum logo, the Cohen logo. On this side, the same exact things going on with the Avenger body. Uh, it has matte black for the window outline and the top of the fenders here, which is really cool. Uh, the roof has Avenger down the stripe with the 25th anniversary logo on the hood. Very blurry. You can't actually read that, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but it does say, if you were able to read it, it would say Avenger 25th anniversary. We have some stripes along the hood here. And then the front here with some tinted sort of white headlights. They're kind of a cream color with black outlines. The silver front grille for the Bel Air. We have this interesting looking duck logo, which I don't know what that is. Um, hopefully some Avenger fans will be able to answer that in the comments. But uh, there's an interesting logo there. Slap and Stick Decals, which is the decal company that does the wraps for Avenger. And the black stripe continuing down the back. We have a silver roll cage, neon green chassis, neon green rims black tires with BKT printing. So this is one of my favorite Bel Airs and there hasn't been many yet, but I think this, as far as accuracy goes, definitely hits all the marks. I don't think there's anything about this truck uh, that is inaccurate. I really think they hit the nail on the head here uh, with this release. And I'm very excited to finally have it for this review and for the collection. All right, the last two of the review, Avenger was awesome, but I gotta say this is my favorite out of all the new trucks besides the chase piece aside from it. The new Indies this year, this is the one I was looking forward to the most. I have been a huge fan of Recreation ever since I saw it at World Finals. And when I heard Spin Master was going to make it this year on the poster, I've been waiting with bated breath on the full reveal of it. And here it is today for one of the last new singles packs of the year, Recreation by Tom Fuller Motorsports and Star Creations. Let's open it up. All right, Recreation, oh my gosh, this is just, this is awesome, it's perfect. I think it might be one of their best castings yet. Honestly, I think they did such a great job with it. Uh, there are a couple things that are missing and I'll mention them in a moment, but um, I think casting wise, it's, it's awesome. I, I am very impressed with it. It looks just like the real life truck from the side views, especially. Let's talk a little bit about Recreation. It is one of the newest fleet members of Tom Fuller Motorsports alongside Excalibur. Uh, it did debut at World Finals after a long time uh, waiting for it. Uh, it was announced, I believe, at the end of 2021, it might have been. So we've been waiting for this one for a little while. Um, we did recently receive the 3D Kraken by Spin Master as well as Jester. So now we have pretty much the entire team besides Michigan Ice Monster, which just recently debuted. And I'm sure we'll see that at some point. But uh, Recreation is the more uh, detailed of all of them, even Kraken. Uh, the 3D crack, and I think this is the most detailed of them all. Very difficult to execute this kind of body. Uh, it's a big piece on a chassis. It's really a testament to the hard work of Star Creations, who do an amazing job at everything that they make for, whether it's Monster GM or Independence. Um, this is truly one of their best works of art for the independent fleet that I have seen. So let's talk about the chassis. It has a silver roll cage with a gold inner chassis, black tires with BKT printing on them, and then solid gold rims. Now, the one thing I don't love that Spin Master keeps doing is that Tom Fuller Motorsports runs black rims with gold beadlocks. Every time we see a Tom Fuller Motorsports truck, it's always the solid rims. Hopefully in the future, we'll start to see them do the black rims with the gold beadlocks, but again, it doesn't take away from the truck too much. So the casting is actually divided up into two pieces. It is plastic and metal, like we saw with Crush Cycle from Series 31. I mentioned Spin Master has not really done a multi-material casting for the better part of five years. Earthshaker, especially uh, like Hot Wheels had, was expected to be half plastic, half metal, but Earthshaker is fully metal, uh, unlike Crush Cycle and unlike Recreation. So Crush Cycle was the first to have a half plastic, half 
metal casting. Now Recreation comes in as the second one of the same year in 2023 to have a half metal, half plastic. But in this case, it blends so well, it's hard to even tell that the difference is there. It still feels like the weight of a normal truck too because of this big cab. Uh, so let's talk about the cab. The cab is a burnt yellow color. So you can see the burnt yellow paint job. It has the white stripe with the rust details like the real life truck has along the side here. The front grille is awesome. It is really well done. It has the recreation logo in the front emblem area. No license plate, but we do have turn signals and headlight printing with the full grille wrap. We have the Star Creations logo on the hood there with the rusty style appearance. The roof of the plastic piece of the camper has the printing that says go outside and play, which is part of the real life trucks feature as well. The side panels here have the bears looking out of the window. I love that detail. The gas cap cover, recreation, the yellow stripes along the side, some sponsors here, which include Star Creations, Master, Faster Graphics, uh, Monster Jam logo, some more windows up here. I can't remember what's in these windows. I'll have to put a picture on screen of this side panel, uh, the windows that actually have more animals in them. Uh, and then the back here with the back door, it has a ton of sponsors that are completely illegible because the real life truck has so many on there. I do see the Tom Fuller Motorsport sponsor there on the back door, but as far as actually being able to read them, you absolutely cannot. They're just too small on the uh, die cast, which is understandable. They're just micro details at that point. There is a recreation logo on the back though, right there. And this side, again, with the bears, uh, it's actually a raccoon in the window. I can see his face in this side. So a raccoon in the window there, the bears on this side, the Monster and Star Creations logo and the graphics logo again. And I believe the front of the truck has a window as well. Uh, this is the only detail that's missing from this truck. I'm not sure uh, what was in it, but I'll put a picture on screen again uh, talking about that detail. But for some reason, they left it off. I don't know what the reason was for that, but uh, it is not there. However, I think as a whole, Recreation is probably my favorite truck of the year. I gotta say, hands down, I, I'm very impressed with how it turned out. So now we're on to the last truck of the review, which is our last chase piece of this year and the Monster Feast line. It's sad to see them go. I really enjoyed this series and I know a lot of people didn't, but I did. And it's kind of a bittersweet goodbye to them. I really did think it was a unique idea. So let's unbox Grease Trap, the last new Monster Feast food truck chase piece by Spin Master for series 33. And with that done, it completes the Series 33 assortment, and it completes 2023 as a whole for the singles packs by Spin Master. And now let's talk about Grease Trap because it is our last one to discuss. So I really enjoy this feature because I didn't realize it was part of this until now. It has a translucent kind of a dark purple brown color roll cage. I don't really know how to describe that color. It almost looks like grape soda uh, color roll cage in transparent, or I should, I should say translucent color. Uh, it has a gray chassis. Uh, brown tires with grease splatter on them. So that's a really cool feature. Dark red rims, I would say almost a brick color red rims. And then the entire scheme is actually based off of a 50 style diner, which I really enjoy because I love those classic diners. Uh, whenever you see them, whether it's on the road during a long road trip or your local one in your town, um, this is just an awesome way of uh, making the food truck come full circle. Uh, so you can see we have these bar stools, we have the bar in the background, the classic checkered tiles on the wall. The Grease Trap logo is really simple but awesome. It has grease in the background. Uh, the diner logo. We have the different music players. So if you put a quarter in them, you can actually choose music to play. I like that detail as well. On the back here, we have a jukebox uh, in rainbow with the Monstrum logo, as well as what appears to be a clock with a neon background on the wall, which is the Monstrum logo as well. We also have some records. We have the checkered theme continuing on with the bar stools and the bar going along to this side, which has the grill itself. So this is really cool. So we have some burgers and buns cooking with a dirty, greasy kitchen, which is what you expect with this kind of establishment, but really cool to see it. You can see how the tiles have faded to a darker color because they haven't been clean in a while. We have the actual grease trap above the kitchen here with some grease falling off of it. The open sign, the grease trap logo yet again, the Monster Jam logo, and you can see some cabinets down here underneath the grill. And then we have the front grill itself painted in with the full wrap headlights. We have a burger on the hood, the grease trap logo, and then the roof here with a giant arrow and lights with the neon sign diner and the burger again right there with the spoiler in silver. And now we get to see if our last food truck of the year has a pun or not for its menu board. Let's open up the side here and see. Uh, we do have two puns, which is actually really cool. Tire rings instead of onion rings and tread burger instead of whatever usual burger you would have. $7.99 and $2.99 open sign. And then we have the kitchen yet again in the background as if we're seeing it from this perspective. So there it is, the Grease Trap Monster Truck for the Monster Feast Food Trucks 
Chase Piece series of 2023, the last one, and I will say, without a doubt, my favorite one. The colors, the theme, the idea, it all works for me. I think this is my favorite. Wasabi Warrior, a very, very close second. So let me know what you guys think in the comments about the final assortment of 2023. I know this video went on for a long time. There was just a lot to discuss in this video, but thank you guys for watching as always. I will see you guys in series 34 for the first assortment of 2024, and it's going to be awesome. I'm telling you right now, there is one particular truck that you are all going to lose your mind over. But for now, I'm going to leave your imaginations to it to imagine what could be coming up. I'll see you guys next time. This is Reiner Monster, Mo CD, signing out.